What does the House of Representatives mean to you? Well, it's it's the people's house. That's where we're supposed to be heard, and it's supposed to be full of regular, everyday people. It was never meant to be ran by millionaires, and of course, um, there were people of with money in in even the early days of politics. But and and maybe I should qualify any more. It isn't real hard to be a millionaire if you own. Uh, most farmers are millionaires, so that's almost an obsolete concept in itself. But it's meant to be for regular everyday people to go there, do the business of government, get it done, not stay there their entire lives, come home, go back to your job, and send the next person out that's qualified and ready to do the same job. But that's what the House of Representatives should be or what it what I what I think it means to me. We're in two thousand seventeen now. We just got done um you know, less than a half a year ago with the 2016 elections where Trump won and Bernie Sanders had a good run on, on, on the left there. Um, two outsiders um, is the main point here. Uh, what did you think about uh, seeing two kind of outsiders from two of the main parties? Does that uh, say anything about our state of affairs, the state of the union at this time? Oh, definitely. Uh, we can tell just you know, that people are fed up with it. They're sick and tired. The biggest problem we're facing right now is they're tired and they're not coming out and voting. And I can't stress that enough in Montana. If you're tired of the two parties, come out and vote for me and cast your vote so it counts. Because when you stay at home, you you throw away your voice. It's It's gone. And they get to carry on as normal, just business as usual. So we have to have these people that are, have opted out. They need to come back in. They need to vote again. I mean, 55% in Montana, I think, didn't vote on the last go-around. Um, I need those people out. We're looking at a really low turnout is what they're telling us. If these people that are fed up come out and vote for me, not just because they're fed up, but because I'm a good candidate besides, we're going to win this election, and then the entire politics in the United States is going to be stood on its ear when a candidate that spent less than $10,000 upsets two candidates that have spent $15 million to date. When I upset them, it is going to send a message through the entire political system that the value that we put on that will be priceless. So that's why I'm telling people, you need to donate. We need to get some money. We need to start making headway. I know I'm not going to be the last in, uh, libertarian or independent running. This is just the beginning, but we got to get the ball rolling. I also think kind of like how sometimes um, a crowd might have like a group mentality until one person stands up, and there's been studies, psychological you know, double-blind studies on this effect where when one person stands up, then all of a sudden um, it creates momentum for a lot of other people to stand up also. And so it, it could also psychologically wake up our country until, you know, letting people know what other possibilities exist and, you know, being assertive to choose those possibilities as well. Absolutely, absolutely. There's a lot of the ideas that I put out on my campaign definitely aren't new. They've been around for a long time. I'm sure when I get to Washington, there's bills exactly what I'm talking about sitting in drawers in congressmen's offices all over the Capitol building, but they need somebody to pull, help them get it out and push it. And they've probably been told by the leadership in the party to le put it in the desk, never let it see the de light of day but they just need a little bit of encouragement. And somebody that can put it out there that that can take the heat that's outside the party. And I think I'm the person that can do that. Yeah, I mean, I saw one bill like that um, a senator introduced, I think it was Rand Paul, that uh, he just wanted to make Congress um, be uh, legally uh, responsible for the same laws that they pass for the people. I mean, you would think that would pass without any uh, qualms instantly. <laughs> But that's one of those bills that's hiding in the drawer, like you said. You know, we probably should have a lot more oversight about what's actually even going on. And having someone who's a representative of the people might um, at least be able to, 
you, you know, scope it out, um, bring light to what's really going on there. And uh, so just for that benefit, you, you know, um, it'd be great uh, to have you there. And Yeah. You know. Well, I, I would just like to point out that take uh, Homeland Security is building, I call it a castle, their headquarters. They've spent a billion and a half dollars on a building, and it's not finished yet. The Consumer Protection Agency has spent $500 per square foot on their building that's not finished, and it's a leased building. They're leasing it. We don't even own it, and they managed to put $500 per square foot in. It's just like they're, they're throwing bags of money out to these um, agencies and just letting them spend it however they want you know, without very little oversight. But that's not surprising because Congress has got into too many areas and they can't, they're not even doing what they're supposed to be doing, what the Constitution says they can do. And, and now they're trying to get into even more areas. And it's not going to work well. Well, if um, so I guess it would start by adding more competition, uh, someone like you um, as a representative, and then, you know, and hopefully you would uh, shed some lights on instances like that, uh, billion-dollar buildings, no-bid contracts, et cetera, that we don't really hear about in the media. Uh, being an American, like you're uh, taught at an early age about competition, it's almost, I would say it's almost considered a virtue uh, in this country. And most other countries... You know, the Western industrialized world, they I, I, actually I looked this up. I, I don't think there's any other except maybe one other country besides the United States that does not have at least four major parties. So, you know, what does it say? What does your campaign say about competition or lack of choices, competition? Um, I guess not just in the political spectrum, but, uh, you, you know, across our entire uh, culture. Well, it's important to understand that if you want things to change, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over. We keep voting R's, we keep voting D's, they go out to Washington, and a lot of times they just flip-flop positions. We, uh, I mean, how long, it wasn't too long ago when the Democrats were shouting for uh, immigration enforcement, and, you know, and then they flip-flopped. There's the Republicans... Uh, are all for it, and you know what? And it never gets done. Nothing. They just keep changing positions, and it's starting to look like they're, gee, an awful lot alike. It's just who's who's arguing about who wants the biggest piece of the pie, and and it's not the American people that are getting the pie. It's it's the party elite, and I'm out here in Montana saying, hey, let's send these get guys to bed without their supper, and we'll eat the pie. 